Okay, hello and welcome back to the uh, LR TV uh, vlog. Right, so the other day I was uh, still in the bouts of man flu and I was looking at the uh, LT230 plate drawings because I found the metal now. Uh, we will be getting on with that shortly. And I was a bit curious about this uh, edge size. And, well, basically, uh, long story short, I actually was reading the... Uh, uh, diameter of a hole and not the radius of a hole and it just didn't make sense until uh, Paul drew me out a drawing and he also advised me to go and have a look at Draft Site, which is a brilliant uh, free uh, 2D CAD software and you can google this uh, Draft Site, and it comes uh, free obviously it's only uh, limited so I put it on the computer as you can see here, this is actually for Mac. You get Mac PC and uh, Linux even, if you're a Linux person. And you have a 2D uh, drawing system. So uh, that's pretty good. If somebody's interested in doing this, you also get a, a get started guide to it. So uh, brilliant. And you can draw out drawings like this. And thanks to Paul for it. So uh, crawl aboard. Yeah, I've had to quickly knock out one out of a few bits of scrap and uh, a few wheels. I'm sure that you'll actually recognize this. This is a cut down of something that was acquired out of a, a ditch. And I'll tell you what, this is probably the best wheel system there is. Now, it's a little bit high. So a fat guy like me uh, obviously won't be able to get under a car unless it's lifted up. But um, the design I've done just quickly, there's a curve in it for the head and then a platform. The platform is a stainless steel. Rather than having something soft, you can weld gas cut and dirt on it and it will still be okay. Right, so yeah, this is just the uh, morning's work, putting the tools on the tool board. It's actually managed to support that weight, which I'm surprised. Yeah, it's the same old stuff again, ABS sensors breaking off and uh, bringing up faults. Okay, that, that's sort of run of the mill for me. And uh, well, actually, uh, it's been a hard day today. Not only has it been a hard day, but I've also had uh, certain problems which I don't usually come across. Now, this bolt is actually, I think it was cross-threaded. I couldn't get it out of the caliper carrier. Now, uh, yeah, with a, you know how a caliper fits on over a disc, then you know that I had to uh, pull the disc off with the hub and the caliper all in one go after I'd gassed the head of the bolt off, as you can see here. And, yeah, that is stuck fast. I really don't know why that is stuck like that. It doesn't usually happen. But we're engineers here. We can get around things. Usual problems, it breaks are brakes, and you'll see this on any type of vehicle. Um, the pad's been stuck to the disc and then suddenly pulled and it's uh, broken away. Now, a set of discs on this, another caliper, and this is going to kill me because I've got to go in Saturday morning to uh, fit a new caliper when it's delivered. And uh, what I want to show you here is that HGV calipers, well, they're not a million miles away from... Uh, um, calipers that you find on the uh, cars you have your slider pins and you have your pistons these slider pins obviously are a larger size because the brakes are larger whereas compared to the td5 okay this is uh, the discovery um, calipers and this one is the d2 calipers um, you have your caliper body with pistons and then you have uh, a caliper carrier now the carrier holds the uh, slider pins here same principle Basically, it's a foundation brake, whereas these are not. These have fluid both sides, and it pushes the pistons in. So, yeah, you get the idea. I could tell you a lot about braking problems. This actually, this caliper actually uh, has an adjuster on it, and it's seized. And the carrier itself has failed completely. It's, not only is it corroded to the point of uh, almost braking, but it's also put me in a predicament, basically, because we don't actually have a carrier for the caliper, which means this is hanging, and I've got to go about 6 in the morning, go and do my job, and then do some LRTV, but I'm on holiday next week. Right, so HGV brakes, I'll quickly explain, explain them. This is a, a spring brake chamber. Um, you have air in it, which will hold the spring brake off when the vehicle's running, and then when you foot, put your foot on the brake... It will push a uh, piston out and then it will operate the caliper so it uh, clamps the disc. And uh, yeah, basically these, well, <laughs> it's the same old thing except for these have a lot more heat in them than what your Land Rover would have, for instance. These are prone to cracking both sides and they can crack completely. Now, if you like uh, my little mirror here, this is an inspection mirror. It's supposed to have a light on it and it sometimes works, but... 
These are brilliant for inspecting anywhere on a vehicle that you can't quite see the other side of something. So, I mean, I don't just use these for discs, but it, it helps. It also has a little lamp in it when it chooses to work, as you can see here. Uh, it's pretty groovy. You could always use this for looking at the back of an engine, for instance. Right, back to brakes. Uh, this is quite a common fault on the uh, on any type of caliper system where the caliper actually uh, uh, works okay to a point, but the pad will get stuck in the carrier. Now, there's two things that can happen here. Um, where the pads sit, you can have a really deep rut and it will get stuck and it will not go over that edge. As you can see there, there's the rut. Or you can have a massive amount of corrosion or filth in there, which will also hold the pad. And something that we do uh, quite regularly is to check on brakes to make sure they're working. Axle 1 is at 7.5 tonnes. Um, it's passed certain things, it hasn't on here because it's got such an imbalance because we're having a, quite a difference in uh, brake pressures from one side to the other. Uh, generally, an MOT you would fail on something like this because your calipers wouldn't be working properly. Okay, Other figures here saying that calipers are working fine. Obviously this paperwork is from a three-axled uh, trailer. However, it's all the same thing. Right, so uh, calipers on the bench here, we have the Defender and the Discovery 1 type, which is all hydraulic. And then we have the later type of uh, design, which everything has now with uh, two pistons, uh, a slider and uh, a caliper carrier. Okay, this is on absolutely everything now. Um, well, hang on, just get this out of the way. Right, so with the Defender 1, it's all hydraulic. It has four pistons on it. Um, and as I said, with this type, it has larger pistons. As you can see, this, um, this is all to do with Pascal's uh, law. Uh, however, they find that this uh, sort of system is more efficient than the older Defender types. You've only got two pistons to fail here. Um, on the rear, obviously, there's only one piston or two pistons for the hydraulic type and the sliders, again, because you don't need so much braking force on the rear. Okay, first of all, thank you to Mario, who's given me a box full of calipers. And I have a uh, piston spreader, and I also have some fittings um, for putting pistons and seals in. Okay, now I've got front and rear kit for overhauling the uh well actually it's either a, a disco uh, one or a, a 90. Um, this is a full axle set and the calipers are not in bad condition as you can see um, there's only just light corrosion on them and i think this will these are, are worth uh, overhauling these are 31 millimeter pistons sorry 41 millimeter pistons and the tool i have here fits in which we're going to use for putting the seals in. Okay, this will be in a tutorial later. We've got a few things to do yet, of course. But you can see uh, the uh, full set of calibers here are uh, in fairly good condition. So we'll be doing those later. Anyway, brakes are brakes are brakes, whether they're on trailers or on uh, trucks or on Land Rovers. It's all the same thing. Air suspension, however, is a little bit different. Uh, trailers here have a uh, leveling valve. Now, it might be of interest to some people. Might not be. Hang on, let's just get in a little bit closer. This valve keeps uh, the trailer level so it's got the right amount of air in the airbags. You'll recognise these. You'll see them on the D2. This is actually on the rear of a, a, a unit, on a DAF unit. However, this is an electronic uh, potentiometer and you have two of them. Now, this actually reads the level and it's got an ECU um, which will keep the ride height exactly how it should be. And you can see the airbags here. ECU is somewhere underneath there. It's not to the left, which is an ABS valve. And this is also, a, sorry, an EBS valve. Okay, uh, you can see, just about see the A-frame on the, the DAF rear axle. It makes it interesting, doesn't it? Because there are certain things that are very common in uh, motor vehicle engineering, whether they're big or small. Um, ECAS like this, some of you might have seen this on the uh, retrofit Land Rover kit. This is in a DAF truck. Now this one is actually fully manual. There's no electronics in it and it just uh, depends on the valve itself to keep the airbags at a certain level. It's got a rod, a reaction rod, and this is attached to the axle. I'll just bring the uh, camera down here. 
All right, so basically it gets its control from here, which keeps the body at a certain level from the axle. Now, you're probably wondering where the hell I'm going with this because um, D2s can have air, any Land Rover can have air. And look, this is a mechanical, uh, it's not electronic, this is a mechanical um, raise, lower or level valve, which is pretty handy to know because I'm thinking of doing this on the D2 project is to have airbags, but with manual control. The other thing here, just out of interest, this has a uh, lock valve for steering axle. And yes, trailers, they do have steering axles. This is a kingpin on the rear. Now, because it's a trailing axle, the, the kingpin will be the opposite way uh, to how you think it is. It will self-steer. So when you go around a corner, the axle will steer and it will go straight again. It has a lock in here that's uh, held in by a, a brake chamber. Okay, um, This is just really simple engineering. And I, I have... It has crossed my mind to do this on the D2 with the lift axle that's steering, um, just for uh, a curiosity, because I bet nobody else has done that. I'm not sure about the legalities yet, but um, you know what I mean. It, it's something to ponder on. Okay.